we're going to start with the picks with the games that we have the most picks on. And we're going to go down towards when we have the fewest. And so we're going to start with the game I'll be at on Monday. The Denver Nuggets taking on the Golden State Warriors. Warriors off of that huge win versus the Boston Celtics. They'll have a a game in between there. Taking on the Denver Nuggets defending champions. The Nuggets are at home for the second year on Christmas. Nuggets are a four and a half point favorite. The early look ahead line is a heads up on this. The total on this game these totals were posted kind of look ahead and I'm expecting them to be altered because we've had way scoring up. The lines have gone up with them. They haven't, there hasn't been like an edge on the overs, but so when we talk about these things, we have total plays. We'll give you ranges of where you should and should not play them. That said, the nuggets are a very popular play for us on this show. So we're going to start and let's start with Jim Turvey and why he likes the Denver nuggets minus four and a half Jim. Yeah, this is uh, the pick we're all on, which, you know, we know what what happens when when we're all on one pick. But hopefully we all give you we walk through it and and you join us and and it it doesn't happen the way we think it will happen after those those plays tend to go. But uh, for me, you know, Denver has been a little bit whatever to the spread as a whole this season. They're they're under 500 against the spread. But at home, they're still holding strong. They are still those home nuggets that we have thought of them in seasons past. Um, where the market just doesn't seem to quite adjust enough for for that home stadium they've got there. Um, but the bigger thing for me here is uh, the Dray- the Draymond Green of it. You know, he's missing, and the Warriors have actually played pretty well of late. A little bit of you know Ewing theory there. They've they've won uh, three in a row without him. But this this is a matchup where I think it it's really going to rear its head a little bit. You know, on on defense, he's the best option they have to even slow down Jokic. Um, but even more on the other side of the ball, the the Warriors have been a little bit of a tricky matchup at times for Denver because they can pull Jokic up in that uh, Curry and Draymond pick and roll. And you know, that's one of the t- trickier spots for him to be in defensively. Uh, that there's no there's no way to do that now. You know, Looney is not going to be able to to run the four on three like Draymond can. Um, he's he can't space out, even though Draymond at this point isn't spacing as much. It's just it takes a big bite out of their offensive attack against Denver. So honestly, I had this way higher i've had it at nuggets minus eight unadjusted um because i'm i'm not buying that having draymond green out is a plus so there's plenty of wiggle room for me on this year um i'm I'm curious to see you know it it sounds like everyone else is is on that path as well all right let's uh get andrew o'connor watts's sense for why he's also on nuggets minus four and a half yeah so the first thing that popped to me was the line itself uh, this is the exact same line that we had in Denver uh, in early November against these two teams. Um, the only difference is, okay, Draymond didn't play in that game, but neither did Jamal Murray, and he will most likely be in this game. So I don't understand why this is the same line with a player that's at least two points to the spread. Um, they're, the, the Nuggets are 51-23 and 23 with Murray and Jokic since last season, 11 for this season. But another reason uh, that I like that was more generally, so what have been the biggest weaknesses for Denver historically or, or more recent history? Bench and defense, right? So let's start with the defense. They're 11th in adjusted defensive rating this season. They're sixth in the last 10 games, while uh, the Warriors are just 19th in the last 10 games. Uh, even a few of those games had Draymond in the lineup. and But I think Gary Payton II uh, has been a huge factor in being gone. With the bench, uh, we know the Nuggets starters are elite, right? They're third in uh, net rating for starters, 11.7. Uh, the, the Warriors are 19th on the season, minus 1.9. But in the last five games... We've seen players like Reggie Jackson, Peyton Watson, Christian Brown really all really stepped up. The uh, Denver is fourth in bench net rating in the last five games, plus 6.4 with with Golden State solid at 12th in bench net rating. But uh, I really like the way that those those kind of those bench guys are playing. I like Reggie Jackson, uh, maybe a little. 250 to one for a uh, six man of the year. I'd be curious to hear what you guys think about that. Don't want to derail us too much, but those were the big reasons. Uh, bench defense, both massively improved since last time uh, they, these two played. Yeah. So I think if you're, if you're, if you're watching this game, right. And you're <laughs> trying to get away from your family and you want a live bet on this game. One thing I would tell you to look out for the Nuggets bench has been a lot better. They've been a lot better. However, this Warriors bench has been really good with Chris Paul and Brandon Pajemski, right? 
Um, no Gary Payton for this one, but I do think there's probably an opportunity. If the Nuggets build a big lead early, there's probably a chance to go back on Golden State. Like, I think this is a good middle game. I think grabbing Nuggets minus four and a half, based off of what Andrew kind of talked about with the line and where it's at, I think does kind of lean a little bit towards, um, like, yeah, like I lean towards Nuggets. I may wind up playing Nuggets just because they have been so good at home. I will say this season, they're five and three ATS at home with Murray and Jokic. Like, the market is wise. It's still over 500, but it's not like it has been because the market is wise to this team is a fucking demon. Like, they're a wagon at home. Their losses are to the Rockets, um, the straight up, the Thunder straight up in a massive comeback for OKC where Denver just fell apart late. And then an early season game versus Utah in a back-to-back where the Nuggets screwed around and the Jazz barely covered. So it's true that they've been a wagon at home, but I do think there's probably an opportunity here for like Nuggets get out to a big lead and then come back on Golden State when they start to get into, into specifically the Pajemski bench minutes with Chris Paul. Like that's an opportunity where I think that there's probably value. Uh, Joe, you also have a play on the Nuggets on minus four and a half. Why do you like this one? Yeah, like I like Denver. Uh, they've been unbelievable at home this season. Eleven and two straight up, plus eleven point five net rating, and the offense is just cooking. One hundred twenty four point eight points per hundred, and like Jim had kind of alluded to, and Andrew as well, with the with the defense of Golden State, I don't really see any way that they're going to be able to stop Denver or really slow them down. And it kind of checks out when you look at each of their individual players as well. Like Jokic is averaging a triple double against Denver or against Golden State over the last uh two seasons uh murray's been dynamite 26 and 33 points in both games and mpj has been incredible as well like he's hit three or more threes in each of the four games that he's played against golden state over the last two seasons so i think that in a from a matchup perspective as well on like an individual level denver has plus matchups for each of Jokic, murray mpj and even aaron gordon who's got two double doubles in three games against uh golden state in the last two seasons so i think that on like a from a bigger bigger picture level i like denver just overall anyway uh i think that they're a better team i think that the advanced metrics favor them as well even though golden state's interesting because their strength of schedule adjusted rating is significantly higher than yeah. their actual net rating over the course of the season yep. so it, and it's i think it might be one of the biggest if not the biggest in the league which i think is fascinating for a couple of reasons but like on the season as a whole like they haven't really been that good when you look at their net rating but their schedule has been very difficult so it's a little bit harder to gauge them like when you're looking at their advanced metrics so i thought that was fascinating uh but overall i think that this is just a great matchup for denver and looney's looked slower so without draymond i really think this is a very tough spot to slow down Jokic I will say also that the covering the Nuggets nightly this is a game they'll get up for like they will be prepared for this one and when they bring their fastball it gets tough uh AC Albert win the analytics capper what do you got yeah I mean I I agree with these these guys they're super sharp they've done all their homework uh I guess my only question just playing devil's advocate why do you guys think that the line is so short short as in within two possessions four and a half So I think if we look at this, I'm actually kind of expecting, here's what I think. I think that these are probably heavily limited bets that you can't get down anything significant on. And that when we, when the games finish on Saturday night and they know all of the injury status that they will then reopen with other numbers, this number is already taken up to five in the market because it's probably already taken enough. There's a couple other games that are kind of looking that way in terms of some early movement. So I think that what they did was they they posted these numbers on limited because it's too far out. You can't accept high limits on these games because you don't know what the injury status is going to be. Like we have, we're recording this on Thursday night. So we have Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. By the way, if there is an injury where this absolutely affects things, we apologize. Like this is the best that we can do. We had to get this done so people could be with family for the holiday. But that's like, I think, part of it too. Andrew, you got something? Yeah, I just wanted to kind of answer Albert's uh, question because I knew I knew you were going to ask that, Albert. I knew it. I knew it. It seems too easy. Uh, I think part of it is they did. So the Warriors did cover that first game, that four and a half uh, mm-hmm. earlier. Um, it was a three-point game. So I think part of it is that the Warriors did cover this number already, right? Um, adding in Jamal Murray is a couple points on the line, but – the warrior or the nuggets didn't cover that original line. So I was kind of taking it as 
that's why it didn't seem quite as fishy to me. I think also, I think I think instead of that though, because like they're not going to necessarily change the power rating off of the the earlier outcome. But what do what I do think that they'll probably do is they are probably resistant to moving the warrior. Like we're still early enough in the season, there's still leftover. That's why we've we've found value on the Nets. That's why there's value on OKC still. That's why there's value on the Wolves because there is this kind of skepticism of. Like, well, are you really that far off of your preseason power rating? And it's like with the Warriors in particular, I'm like, yeah, I think that they are. Um, that's not to say this is a slam dunk. Golden State can win this game. I'm really curious to see this one. Like, I'm I don't have a play on it yet. I may have to just because that number is so so short for the Nuggets at home in a big spot. But there's something about this that does make me nervous from the perspective of like that win over the Celtics was such a raw raw spot. Like, does that shift how they feel? Sean's Sean's nodding his head. Like, I'm a little, I'm just, if they had lost the Celtics game, I would have already bet this. But they, I, it's literally, they won that Celtics game and I'm like, oh, fuck. Have they found like something to rally behind because I have so much under money on their win total, Sean? Like, I'm a little worried about it because of that. It could be a little rah-rah spot, but I kind of think it's a lot of fool's gold as well. The yeah. shot making that was happening coming down the stretch in that game was absolutely unbelievable. That's one of the best step clutch games we've seen in quite a while if we're being quite honest and what do you know typical boston celtics melting when things get a little hot in the kitchen that that didn't surprise me whatsoever and steph took advantage of that and knocked down some really big shots the the other thing here is when do when do casual public guys love to bet a bunch of money all day on the couch on big holidays the last three games coming in to christmas day we saw Steph Curry just completely destroy Boston coming down the stretch on national television on a doubleheader on TNT, whatever the only game on. Then they're getting ready to play Washington. They're going to play the Blazers. Steph probably torches those guys as we record this. And then we get into Christmas Day. If, if, if a guy's sipping Matt Moore eggnog on the couch doesn't <laughs> want to take the nuggets for whatever reason, it's like, oh, this is a great spot to back um, the Warriors. But I think overall – that team is if if anybody's going to get hot and make difficult shots like they were making, then they're going to typically get big wins against big teams. There, I, I don't think there's a big enough rah rah spot to go into Denver and get a W. Last point on this game, I think an interesting angle here would potentially be to take like a second look. Look at like a second quarter offensive over. Andrew O'Connor Watts talked about the bench and the scoring Denver, the last 10 games, offensive rating on the bench is number one in the NBA. It's 70 plus and the Warriors are top 10. We know Jokic in that rotation is going to be pretty, pretty standard where he's going to play almost a vast majority of the first, if not the entire first, then come off the floor in the second. You might want to look at a spot there to potentially either get on the Warriors or depending on how you're feeling about the total over for that quarter look into that piece as well also last point we got to get andrew a nickname i can't be saying this 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 whole name every time <laughs> I, I i i've sold i think on ao watts so, ao watts okay AO watts. we could do that i like ao watts, watts or or just watts a lot of my friends call me watts if you yeah. want to do that right, no but the, the name is too cool not to have a nickname that's not just watts so we i'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll get back to you fair enough fair enough um his stage name so to speak brian faseca who wins this game got got got, got impression Denver and I mean one how could you not say Denver because of everything we've been talking about but also I I kind of almost treat the Christmas Day games as playoff games because it has this sort of atmosphere so I think Jamal Murray is somebody I would look at prop wise uh because he he's he could tear up this Golden State defense with Draymond Green not being there. And also Nikola Jokic is the obvious one because, as Joe mentioned, averages a triple-double over the last couple of years against this team. I think this is one of the these games because we haven't gotten as many of them as I would have thought this season that we see, oh, shit, Nikola Jokic, Jamal Murray, you know, reminded that they're maybe the best duo in the NBA fresh off a title. And I think they could both be in line for big games. So I'll be looking at their overs as well to see what – those props are going to be that day, but I'm almost treating these games, this one in particular, like it's a playoff game because I'm expecting that type of atmosphere. Uh, one more on this one to wrap up. Uh, I've got a, a best bet on the over 230 and a half. There is not a number that this is going to repop at that I would say that I'm not going to be on it. I have this projected uh, at 246.6. Uh, the, the Nuggets have gone under at home. 
They play a really slow pace. The Warriors will speed them up a little bit. The Warriors in road games, eight and six to the over. And then more importantly, they are nine and five to the opponent team total over. Denver's putting up a big number here. Denver's defense has slid over the last couple of weeks, so their overall numbers are going to be a little bit skewed. I really like the 230 and a half over here. 